Hello everyone, this is Ange. Welcome to another episode of the Visual Novel Monthly Recap. This is a video series where I highlight news related to visual novels and the community for each month. For this episode, I'm going to be discussing what happened in October of 2022. And before I continue, a huge shout out to Bruce Gone Loose, who went out of his way to edit this Visual Novel Monthly Recap video specifically so it can be exactly how it's been in my channel the whole time. Please give him a follow on his YouTube channel. So definitely one of the biggest visual novels that had headline news throughout October was Chaos Head Noah. There's definitely been a lot of good and bad news around it. Let's start off with the good news. As many may know, Chaos Head Noah got banned off of Steam about a couple of months ago, and Spike Chunsoft only confirmed it about towards the end of September. Around the beginning of October, there was a hashtag on Twitter called Save Chaos Head, basically a way for people to make their voices heard loud to save Chaos Head Noah to get it re-approved on Steam. I'll admit I was kind of skeptical about this because usually hashtags and petitions don't really work that well. However, likely due to the Science Adventure series' very vocal and passionate fan base, Spike Chimsoft and Valve pleasantly announced that they did put back Chaos Head Noah, and subsequently Valve made a statement that they were going to change the approval rules so we could prevent a weird fake deletion like they did with Chaos Head Noah. Unfortunately, when the game came out on both Steam and Switch, there was a whole bunch of problems and complaints people had with their release. Many have cited many of the different translation choices and various little bugs that have shown up. But I would say the most egregious one was the fact that the Switch and Steam version both had this weird bug where apparently the ending movie couldn't be played. So at least for a while, 0% of the players had the completion trophy because it was basically literally impossible to complete Chaos Head Noah on Steam or Switch. I believe sometime later, a patch did get uploaded to Steam to fix that ending bug. Unfortunately, I do not think the same can be said for the Switch version just yet. So if you're one of those people that prefers to read visual novels on Switch, it's possible that it might get released sometime after this video, but as of this recording, I believe the Switch version is still bugged. This does bring me to another bit of good news in that once Chaos Head Noah got approved on Steam again, the Committee of Zero, the fan translation group that's dedicated to fixing all the Spike Chunsoft official releases of the Science Adventure series have officially stated that they are going to make a patch for both the Steam and the Switch versions, addressing many translation concerns they had in addition to many of the little bugs. However, towards the end of the month, they did release an apology because they originally said they were planning to release it late October, but due to all the bugs and likely the last minute Steam approval, they just didn't really have enough time to fix all the bugs and such, so they're targeting mid-November instead. A partial four-route English fan translation patch released for Haruka ni Aogi Uruwashi no. The routes translated include Miyabi, Shino, Tonoko, and Yuna. Unfortunately, apparently due to the fan translation group unable to find enough translators to finish the rest of the routes, this is apparently going to be the final release for Haruka ni Aogi, so if you plan on reading it, you're basically stuck with these four routes. Kind of related to the Chaos Head Noah, getting back on Steam news, Jast tried to do the same for getting their all-ages version of Full Metal Daemon Muramasa back on Steam. Unfortunately, it appears Steam is only looking to reconsider future banned apps and will not be re-reviewing previously banned apps, so unfortunate for people who are hoping to read Muramasa on Steam. Although only partially related to visual novels, it was announced that in the new Silent Hill game called Silent Hill F, the main writer of Higurashi and Umineko Ryukishi 07 is going to be the main writer for Silent Hill F. I think this is a really interesting choice because Ryukishi definitely has a very interesting style of, of creeping out the reader during mystery stories, so I'm really interested to see how Rikishi will be liked in the public eye. Apparently, a legendary visual novel from the developer Elf called Boku no Kanjo wa Gatenke, or My Girlfriend is a Blue Collar Worker, was recently fan translated, though it's notorious for powerful NTR content, so just keep that in mind if you're interested in reading that. 
For those who have been waiting for Hoshiori Yume Mirai Perfect Edition to have a lot of its bugs fixed, it looks like they finally released a patch that fixes a lot of the issues. For reference, I believe the Perfect Edition patch before this month had a lot of weird cases where the lines didn't show up correctly a lot of the times, and possibly various other bugs. While Committee of Zero didn't release a patch for Chaos Head Noah, it looks like they released a 2.1 patch for the original Stein's Gate, where it features text fixes, updated CGs, and the long-awaited cosplay patch. A pretty popular otome called Butterfly's Poison Blood Chains got a release on the Japanese Switch Store, which has the ability to switch text to English. Unfortunately, I don't think it's possible to currently buy it on the official English Nintendo Switch Store, so you'll just have to wait for them to hopefully release that or a physical version if you're interested in this Otome. Shirobune made a very surprising announcement. They acquired yet another license from another visual novel company. In this case, they got Alpha Nighthawk, which is the newest Liarsoft visual novel. Manga Gamer has previously released visual novels like Jean at the Clock Tower and Gokthun by Liarsoft, so it was a little surprising to see Shirobune get yet another company that Manga Gamer has previously been releasing visual novels from. I don't know much about Alpha Nighthawk as it just released, but I assume if you like Liarsoft visual novels, hopefully you'll like this one. If you wanted your Yuri visual novel to have the main girls wearing animal girl ears, Sekai Project released a Camo Mimi patch for Watamari A Match Made in Heaven Part 1, where it does just that, add animal girl ears to the main characters. If you like them Manga Gamer USB physical copies, they just released a USB physical copy of Hasahime of the Old Book Town. At Anime Weekend Atlanta, JAST announced the Onigako fan disc. To quote their very blunt tweet, this is the one where you can fuck your sister. Big news. Nekonyan went to Anime Weekend Atlanta, and there they announced several new visual novel announcements that they're going to be translating. The first one is My Klutzy Cupid, developed by Hulot. Shirovune released a Hulot visual novel called Kamiyaba, so I figure if you like that, you might be interested in a visual novel like this. Apparently the premise is you'll have 90 days to find the bride of your dreams unless you want to get cursed. The only visual novel from a company they've translated from visual novel from before is a rather surprising announcement of Koi Chako, or going to be localized as Love, Elections, and Chocolate. If you didn't know, this was Sprite's first visual novel that they've ever created, and Sprite is the and Sprite is the developer that made the Alcana series. I'm assuming Nekonyan got the HD version of Koi Chako, and we'll be releasing that. Nekonyan also announced Love, 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 Burning in My Heart. I don't really know much about this or its original developer. All I know is that the description says, Fight against the Normie Resistance to prevent the cancellation of the upcoming Christmas party where couples thrive. The next visual novel they announced was Enki Dekinai, or what they're localizing the title as, Ready or Not, The Deadline is Coming. This is the release I was most interested in because it's apparently a very technical visual novel where they actually show the makings of how a company would actually develop an eroge or visual novel. I've always been interested in stuff like that, but I just wasn't really interested in a nukige like the eroge by Klaka. The final announcement that they made at the final Nekonon announcement is Shinso Noise, Mysteries of the Heart, The Psychic Detective, Case Files by Azurite. This is an interesting title because they're working together with DMM, and usually that's something only Shirovune has done to this day. Nekonyan advertised this as a mystery-heavy visual novel, and if I'm not mistaken, the artist who makes the clock-up visual novels is the one that makes the art for this visual novel. And there you have it. That was the news of October 2022. As always, if you have any feedback, positive or negative, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd like to give a special thank you to Marie Antoinette who's now been a, a member of my channel in the VN Weirdo tier for two months ongoing. Much appreciated. I also want to give a huge shout out to the three people who gave me money through Ko-Fi last month. Bartek, Lominix, and especially T-Lover who gave me the especially big donation. Extremely well appreciated. 